mastering the art of upselling and networking in your lawn and garden business. Do we still need to advertise? These are some of the issues I'm going to discuss in this next video. G'day YouTubers, Jeff McCree's Gardening, Melbourne, Australia. Upselling and networking are very powerful tools to use in our business. We advertise for new customers all the time and we're hoping that we're going to get the right one. But once we get our books near full up of really good customers, using networking and upselling, we really can downscale our advertising. Sure, we never get rid of advertising, always have that profile there, because some customers we're going to lose, some customers are going to sell, going to ride on ahead. So it's important to maintain advertising, of course. But if you use networking and upselling of your clients to the extent that it will give you a all year round uh, income flow, you won't need to advertise. You're very little advertising. Upselling, as we've mentioned in previous videos, is a very powerful thing to have. We get a really good client and we're servicing their property. Now, a good client values your worth, values your service, because you're going to provide that year-round uh, service that's going to give them a spectacular garden all the time. That means not just mowing their lawns, but doing all the other aspects of the garden. Whilst you're mowing the lawn, you're going to look around and you'll see that the hedges need doing. So you'll say to the client, listen, I think we need to do the hedges. We're starting to get uh, to a stage where we're um, out of control. And the client goes, not a problem. So you, you've already worked out the price because you've looked around, you've been there a, a few times before and you know roughly what it will take. So the, the client will come back with, with several reactions. One will be, oh, how much do you think that'll be? Well, you're in a position because you've been there, you know the place well, you'll be able to price it right. You'll go through that process. You'll look at it and you'll, you're going to say to the client, we're going to reduce it. I'm going to detail to the client. I'm going to reduce it by 600 mil. I'm going to square it up and make it uh, look tidy and have a nice straight bottom, straight top. And I'm going to take all the clippings away to the tip. And that'll be about $350. So you're given a detailed uh, explanation of what you're going to do for the client and, and then give them a value and the client will think yeah that's all right okay I believe that now in my case most of my customers say just do it because upselling is a thing that I've always done what I do is it's a year-round thing I anticipate what's going to be needed to be done in the garden so each customer I'll go through step by step what needs to be done you know Winter time, we're going to do the rose pruning. We're going to do the after spring flower. We're going to start doing some cutting back. We've got to mulch before the summer. We want to check the reticulation system, make sure it's working. We have these all detailed right throughout the year and the customer knows it's going to be done. So by offering those upselling services to the customer, it'll become a natural thing. So in my case of my clients, I don't have to ask, it's just done because they know it's, it's going to be done. So your new client, or you haven't been around for a while, he might say, look, go ahead and do it. Or what I suggest in that case, because you haven't been involved with that client for a long time, probably doesn't hurt to give him an estimate of what it's going to cost, so there's no shock. He might think, oh, it's only $100, and it's gonna be 350 go, whoa, that's, that's a, that, I didn't expect it to be that much. So you'll be able to gauge what sort of customer they are when you work out how much it's going to cost, detail step-by-step -step to that client, and, and that's what it is. We've detailed a program for the client that'll get you right throughout the year. The slow times in winter, the drought times in the summer, right around the whole year, it'll give you a constant cash flow. And that's so important. Because you're already dealing with that customer, you don't have to find a new one. You know they're good payers, you know they're good to get on with because they're in your good customer stable. And that's where it all happens. The other aspect to the business, of course, is networking with other contractors. They do appear to be a part of those two subjects, but just bear with me. A contractor, I, I go to the tip and, and I always say, oh, how's it going and what's new? And, and you'll get the number of contractors that they won't even make eye contact and you'll get a grumble or grunt. You, you, you'll get nothing out of them. 
and uh, even when you work in the side of the road, you say, oh, how you going, mate? And they'll just keep on working, not interested. That's fine. But the contractors that do respond back to you, they are a godsend to you. You and, and they help each other unbelievably. Often I'll, I'll have uh, requests from, because I've formed a relationship with these contractors, they'll ask me, Jeff, can you do some hedging because I'm not really confident with it um, for my client. Now, he trusts me because he knows I'm not going to pinch his client. And the same goes the other way. I'll say um, uh, lawn renovations. I'm not a big fan of lawn. I love them. I like doing them, but I'm, I'm too old. I'm too slow. It's, it's hard work, shoveling soil, and it's a big effort. But I've got a couple of young guys that are really good at it. And I always call upon them to come and do the lawn renos. Now, I trust them. They're not going to take the customer away off me. I mean, they could say, offer the customer a, you know, a, a deal, but it, it doesn't happen because you form that relationship with them. It's so important with contractors to, to, to work with them as friends. You're not, you're not competing against. There's enough work to go around. There's plenty of work. There's enough for the cowboys, enough for the middle, and there's enough for the upper. So never, ever get to the situation where uh, you, you're not going to ever talk to contractors. Look, I, I just think that it's a marvellous thing that we can we can talk with each other and uh, share ideas. Um, you know, every every Saturday we, we, we do our uh, commercial premises and there's quite a few contractors in the estate. It's really fairly quiet. And often we'll have a, we'll have a get together, a bit of a chat, a cup of tea and we'll talk about just the way, way of things in the world. But always gets back to, oh, look, um, Jeff, I've got this client and um, I really can't, uh, you know, my ride-on's sort of not big enough for the job. Would you be interested in handing it over? Or I might say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to wind down a bit, so I want to offload a couple of uh, premises. And we just trade them off. We don't. There's no money exchange. We just, just because we've known each other for years and helped each other out, it's just a mate thing. We'll say, look, mate, can you just take these two for us? Um, you know, discussing prices, where we're at with the prices. You know, we're all much the same because we've all worked out, uh, talked to each other about what what things should be. You know, what new equipment are we using? So tying that back to our, our original subject. Contractors can give you a lot of uh, work to use uh, throughout the year as well. So you have never ever alone in, in creating extra work through upselling, through talking to other contractors, because it will be slow at times. And having that constant flow, that program of maintenance of the properties throughout the year just makes it so much easier. All right, viewers, now, that's the topic for today. Now, my next one is 100, 100 videos. This is my 100th video, not today, but the next one. So I'm just going to give you behind the scenes if you're interested. You know, if you're not, that's, that's no worries. But I'm going to do a behind the scenes on how I make them. And uh, I've had a few people ask me what I do. You'll be absolutely surprised in how much effort I go into it. Um, not a lot, but anyway, I've got uh, a, a couple of things I want to show you and just celebrate my 100th uh, video. I'm, I'm really... Um, I didn't think I'd ever get this far, but I'm, I'm proud of it. I'm, I'm just I'm just wrapped. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. See you later. Bye.